very important when you trying to pass the guard is to use your body weight on your favor as an advantage for you. You want to use your whole body to help your control over your opponent. He's going to be moving away from you. You want to try to get the hooks in. I want your body to be really a very big part of the game. Now, okay, when, whenever your opponent from the bottom open his leg to try to get away, he has to turn his body. As the top guy, I will take advantage. Okay, just come with your head up a little bit, to look, and get the arm outside. I'll get the arm around, outside, and go in front of his leg, this way. I will get the gi, control his gi, yes. I want, I want with one arm neutralized two legs. That means I'll go here, you'll notice that his leg is already outside, the other leg here is across, as you can see, it's across the position. He's gonna now have a hold of his arm. And most important is, he has to be patient. He doesn't wanna pass the guard now. He wanna establish this control. As he tried to react, to get out from this position, there will be the call for him to pass the guard. What happens sometimes is, if he tried to pass the guard, before him react, he will have chance to get out. But if you try, if you wait for him to react, he will have his chance to pass the guard. You gotta be a little bit of, you gotta have a little bit of patience to pass the guard. Okay, again. You notice that every time your opponent turn the body, he turn his legs too. Then you make control and stop. You hold the position now, stay solid. And when he trying to get away, there'll, there'll be the perfect time for you to pass his guard. We will have one variation. He might stand up to pass the guard. And even though when he's standing up, good posture, get up, his opponent from the bottom open the leg and he will also turn his body. Whenever he turns his body, he will give him opportunity to go around, make the same control and go down on his knees. The only difference now is he will start the position from the stand up situation. Now he'll get the same control Hold, be patient, and he'll pass the ball. This one here, I will wait for my opponent to get his legs always across on this angle. Doesn't matter which side. When I see his arm turn this way, that will be the time that I will work my hand around his leg. That's what I'm looking for. This way, my hand will go in. Then I'm having the gear, I will grab the gear and hold this control. But once I will do that, I can't stay on my position. I will have to move my leg over I can keep his leg underneath my shin, across this way. That will be very good, especially if you're fighting somebody bigger than you in terms of balance. I will keep holding here. I will fight for control on his arm or on his collar. Something very important for you to do is you don't want to have his hand this way. That's why I always keep my chin on my chest and I use my, my head on his body. I will be waiting for him to move. When he does move, I'll be walking around and pass his guard. And the important thing here is I have to wait for his reaction to make my pass. I reach the control, I hold until he moves. If he doesn't move, I'm not gonna move. I will wait for him to give me the opportunity. 
If I go to the other side, same thing, I will have my legs across this way or this way. I want you to feel comfortable on your knees and your base. You can be either leg, holding, stay tight. Very important, I will keep my forehead on his stomach right here and just stay. As you try to move and get out, I will stretch my body and walk around to pass the guard. The other side. I can also do this position from the stand up. He turn his body, look his leg position. I will reach here, I reach here, stay on his side, controlling. He moves, I go around, pass his guard. A lot of times when you have an opponent with a very good guard, sometimes, most of the time, short legs, hard for you to pass his guard, there will be a way for you to roll him over, get away from his legs, and end up with a good control. This situation now will be one example and one position that you can use to succeed and pass his guard and end up on his back in a very good position. Okay, Todd, can you? You're gonna be trying to pass the guard, and your main goal when you're on top is to reach one of your hands on his belt. That's the main thing. You wanna get one of your hands on his belt. Once you do that, you can stand up and keep bringing his hip up until he rolls over. Whenever he rolls over, you go around, you're gonna sit down, you're gonna open your legs to have the hooks in. Then you're going to have the back control. Okay. You're trying to pass the guard, and if you're a little difficult, it's hard, has a very good guard, he moves a lot his legs, but you reach his belt. Stop right there, stop right there, good. Step your left leg back, good. Can you see the belt here he's holding? That's a very important point, he's holding the belt, and he's not just going to lift him up, he's going to be, as he pulls him, his opponent up, you're going to be walking with. He walk around, sits down, bring him, and he will be continuing to go after his opponent. He's not only happy to roll him over, he wants to go and get a better position. And the back control will be a very good one. Many times you find opponents with a very good guard, very difficult for you to pass his guard. And uh, to avoid sometimes to go all to all this problem, you can just make him roll and get out of his guard. And one of the things that I find out be very good is on the way that you're fighting to pass his guard on his legs. I want to reach my hand behind his belt. I'm holding his belt. Now, I don't want to pick him up. I just want to keep walking towards him. Evidently, with my hand, I'm going to help him to roll. Now that I'm blocking his back, I have the hands. I will go around to the opposite side. I can't go to this side. got to go now to the other side. As I go around, if you notice, my hand changed the angle. I will use my other hand to help. I will sit down and I'll bring him to the middle of my legs. I will have both of my hooks in, then I can work on his neck and get the back control.
I was trying here to pass, I move his leg up, he's blocking, I reach the belt. Now I'm gonna keep walking, make him roll. As you can see, this move, it's a little bit acrobatic, but it's also very easy to do. And uh, the most important thing on this technique is the surprise element. No one expects you to jump over the leg, and you're gonna end up jumping over with a good base, and end up with a chance even to finish the match. The most important thing is, Gable is gonna be back a little bit, and as I feel that his opponent start working his feet on his hip, he, he will allow his opponent to bring him back in a little bit for him to get the impulse to jump over. He holds one hand on the belt, another one is on the collar on his, on his partner's chest. This way he's in like a, a push-up position. Then he can, there will be his support for him to jump over. He's going to be using his opponent's body to base himself. Now slowly go, jump over. Good, knee on the stomach. Yes. Then you end up passing the guard, plus knee on the stomach, and maybe the arm bar. Okay, again, he's blocking, you jump over, good. Go back into the stomach. The important thing here for Gabriel to be able to jump over is one hand on the same height of his partner's chest and one on the belt. He needs a two good controls and a support as a push-up position to be able to jump. He's gonna be basing his weight on his opponent and throw his legs over to jump. Go ahead, just jump. He's using his arm and knee on the stomach. Yes, good job. That will be, go back there. This will be the most important for him. This one and this one. And as you train, you're gonna understand and get the timing, the momentum of your jumping. That's the important thing now. You learn how to do it, the most important is to learn the momentum that you're gonna be using. A lot of times, when you improvise, or you come up with something a little bit different, you will surprise your opponent and that would be very good for you because he will not have time to recover and find out what he just did. It would be too late for him and very good for you. This way we always work passing the guard from the right side, left side, but we can also pass the guard over. We can jump over his legs and end up in a very good situation. I'll be holding the top of his, his gear here my fist will be close on his chest. The second hand will be work on his belt. If he doesn't have the belt, I can hold his pants. That will be the same thing. His feet is already on my hip. If I walk just a little bit more forward, he can lift me up and throw me. And I have to train and drill this technique to get the right momentum to jump and get out, get away from his guard. I will use this, I'm backing up my body. When I feel a little pressure on me, I will jump at the same time that he pushed me up. I went up, I'm on his hip. That means he cannot follow, because I'm blocking his hip. And I will come back with my knee on the stomach. That's considered passing the guard, plus knee on the stomach. And the best thing, you're out of his legs with a very good position.
Many times you have a lot of fighters who likes to hold your arm and control with his feet at the same time, making it very hard for you to break his control. He's really got a tight and good control on your arms. And I found this way, an easy way for you in a different way to surprise your opponent and breaking his control on your gi. Because he has a, such a good control that it's hard for you to get away from him or even pass his guard. By swinging your leg over, you're going to be able to cut his arms, yes, away from your sleeve, and you're going to end up across his body. Again, slow. I want you just to put your head this way. Good. Stay like that. As you can see, Ed is going to move, he's going to walk his body. No, no. Stay there. You're going to walk your body a little bit towards me. Yeah, now you're going to swing your leg over as you push the leg. Yes. You're going to end up across. Again. Good job. He has a good control, hard to pass, but by using his legs, he's going to be able to break that. He's pretty much will be walking over his opponent. Again. Remember the control that your opponent has. You just need to walk a little bit to the side. You move the leg, and now you step over. Good. You pull your arms out. Side control. A lot of times your opponent holds you so tight, very, very well here, and it's hard to get your hands free. I will try to just turn his butt a little bit, and at the same time that I turn, I'm going to step over. By sitting down on his legs, I will break his control on my gi. I will just sit, slide down to the side control. I will step over his leg and land across his body. Here, I'll step here. Now I'll go this way. I sit down and keep sliding down to the side control. You notice that he has already control over the leg, and a lot of times it's very hard to, even when you have your arms under, to get a hold of the gi, because he was gonna be blocking, he's gonna be pushing with the leg, but it's not hard for you to put your hand on the ground. I want you to put your fist on the ground, like that. See here? And now you really locked his leg on this position. Normally, they're gonna be blocking with this hand over here, that means for Ed on top, he can't get close to Gabriel right now because Gabriel is keeping him away. But nothing is going to stop Eddie to go all the way around. He's going to be pivot on his arm. Just slow, keep moving all the way around. He's not going to stop until he gets on the opposite side. And once you reach this position, this arm here will be the most important thing. I want you to go for the cross face because this will stop him to keep following you. Go back again. You have the leg. Good. Sp go. Now spin around. Good. And as you train this position, you're going to be doing this technique with more speed, short. You're going to feel very comfortable going all the way around. OK? One more time. You control. You pivot. You lock. He blocked. Yes. You're going to be jumping and get around. 
Good job. In this case, I like my opponent sometimes avoid me to grab his gi. He blocks my arm very good. I will land, I will close my hand, I will put my fist right on the floor. I make sure I keep his leg between my arm and my head. And now I try to push my body towards him. I'm holding his leg, I'm keeping my weight, but he's blocking me very good. I will base my arm on the ground. I can walk or I can jump around. And I come to the other side and I apply a cross face to make sure I stop him to rolling towards my leg. That's why I have this arm across. I'm blocking his hip and I'm blocking his head to come and get my legs. Over here trying to reach his gi, he's blocking. I reach the floor. We already start with an open guard. Lou has a control here on, his, on uh, Todd's legs. He want to push Todd's legs to the side, and he want to put his shoulder on the, his leg and wait to move around this way. But evidently here, Todd will be blocking Lou. And uh, there's a man and if Lou wants to push forward, Lou, Todd has a good leverage here on his arm to stop the passing. By feeling that, Lou will move his body back a little bit. He's going to keep his shoulder on his Todd's leg, and he's going to be pivot on his neck this way around. His whole body will be on top of Todd's arms, and nothing Todd can do with his arm until Lou gets his chest on Todd's chest. He has a nice passing, easy, with just his body working over Todd's arms. Can you do it again? He's going to be pushing that leg to the side, yes. Knee down, blocking. He will slide back, yes. Go back one more time. I'm going to just mention this. I'm going to give you the measurement where and when you need to stay to roll. Whenever you have the control on the leg, Todd's knees here will be the perfect spot for Lou to measure when he, where and when he's going to be rolling. When Todd pushes him back, he slides back. He's right on top of Todd's knees. That's now is the time for him to roll in the perfect position to end up with. Yes, excellent. Anything that you do above your opponent's knees, you're going to end up over the head. You don't want that. You want to stay right on his knee to end up across his body. Perfect. The reason Lou is doing that is because Todd is blocking his back. Go back there. That's why he's trying to be creative and using the technique. Now he's going to spin around. He always end up across. Good.
is going to be pushing his, his partner's knee to the side, and he's going to land his shoulder to get a good control on the land. And at the same time, Nico is going to be blocking him. He doesn't want to let him get across his body. And Lou is going to use his whole body to get Nico's hands away from his shoulder by rolling over. He will slide his body back a little bit, roll over, and will end up across the chest. Very important to remember is his knees will be the perfect spot and distance for you to roll over. You don't want to go higher than that, and you don't want to also go lower than that. The knee would be the perfect line for you to end up chest to chest, okay? That's why every time you hold, you push his leg down, you get in, even higher on his leg, he blocks, you slide your body back, now you go. You always going to end up across on the chest. The knee will be the perfect measurement for your shoulder to be, and you're going to be able to roll, okay? Again. And if you notice with no gi, he doesn't need to hold. He just will be blocking the leg to the side. And he's going to be using his body weight on the leg. And when he does that, will be the time that you roll over. You're going to be pushing his knees to the side. Shoulder, yes. Now you're going to end up rolling. Good, perfect. In this case, I'm going to be holding his legs, I'm going to be pushing his legs to the side, I will walk around using my shoulder, he block. I can't go more than that. I will step back a little, keep my neck with my shoulder on the same line of his knee, and just roll around. You end up with a nice pass and a very strong side control. Okay, in this position, you can use with or without the gi because you don't need actually to hold any material. You're going to be using your body to hold his legs. In that case, would be your knees will be tight over here. Your elbows will be over his legs on the ground. You're going to be locking like a turtle right here. Gabriel cannot get his legs away from this position. Ed is locking him there. Now what Eddie wants is to get away from Gabriel's legs. And the one good way for him to do is his arms will be coming around. Okay, now Eddie, I want you to stay with your feet up. Then I want the camera to get your hands. Feet up. Can you see here, he, him holding? Just back up this way, this leg. You see where he's holding the foot? One here and another one here. He's blocking Gabriel's feet this way. The reason he's doing that is because when he jumps over the leg, Gabriel cannot follow him with the hook. That's what he's going to do now. He's blocking the foot, the feet. He's putting his head on the side. Now he's going to be end up across the body. Because he put the head on this side, his body has to end up on the other side. Go ahead, jump. And if, it, as you can see, Gabriel couldn't follow Eddie with his hook because Ed was holding his leg. Can you do it again? Just now want to see your head this way. Good. Now control. He's locking like a turtle. Elbows on the ground. Blocking. Now he's going to look for his feet. He has to move his head to the side. Now he's able to jump. 
good. You end up across, and nothing much Gabriel can do to avoid that jump. One more time. It's very important his legs and his arms together. Head to the side, jump, side control. Good. The good thing of this way of passing the guard is that you don't need to hold any material. It's body contact, body work, and it'll be the whole body passing the guard. The main idea is he will use his legs to keep the hooks inside. And at the same time, his chest will be on the, between his legs and his arms will be tight on the legs. He has no hip mobility right now. He can't move his hip, he can't hook to sweep, because Ed is very solid right now. Now taking advantage of his control, Ed will go around with his arms and he will be holding Nico's feet. As you can see, I need you to lift your leg, Eddie. Then they can see you holding. Move around this way a little bit. He's holding his feet. This way he will avoid Nico to follow his legs with his leg. Then he's gonna be jumping over the leg without problems here. Let's go, slow, You're just holding his feet. Now we jump over, you end up across. Go back. How do you know which side you're gonna jump? That all depends which side you're gonna put your head. If you put your head on this side, your body has to land on this side. If you put your head on this side, your body has to land on the opposite side. It's very important for you to know because you can't jump to the same side of your head. As you put your head on one side, your body will end up across on the other side. Holding the leg, now jump over. End up across, good job. Okay, from this situation, I'm gonna use my legs and my upper body with my elbows to lock his legs. Now I have control over his legs. I don't want him to move his hip away. I will stay here tight. My hands will come both and hold his shin right here. I wanna control his foot. Then I wanna put my head to the side. This way, I will raise my hip and just throw to the side. Once my shoulder get across his stomach, my body is all the way across his body, I'm letting go of the legs and keep fighting the upper body control right here. For him to pass the guard, he needs to get a good control and good position. And for him to defend his guard, he want to avoid it, 
good control from him in a good position. And playing that game now, I want to see Eddie getting a hold of one leg. He has to get at least one hand under the leg. That's the main goal for him right now. He want to get one hand under and the other knee over. He want to be in a halfway passing from this side or halfway passing from this side. Very important point over here will be Eddie's knee pointing outside. That will keep Eddie's base. If Eddie closes his knee too much, Gabriel can push him to the side and he'll be losing his balance. That's this knee here, it is very important for his base. Knowing that, he's gonna keep the base over here. He has two options now. He can go from the front door or he can go from the back door. That means he can block one side, but he cannot block both at the same time. And the thing now would be, Eddie will depend on his reaction to pass the guard from this side or from that side, okay? If Eddie forced the passing from this side, he's gonna be walking around this way. Walk around, Gabriel's gonna be blocking him. Right away, Eddie will be pushing the knee, Gabriel's knee down, putting a lot of pressure here and slowly walk around to this side to end up with his chest across the chest. Again. No matter how good your guard is, you're gonna have to block right side and left side. You cannot block both sides at the same time. That's the advantage you're gonna have to take from this position right now. Now you're gonna be trying to pass the guard from this side. You gotta control the collar, your hands, your palm will be down, good control. Now put your finger inside, yes. This way, his knee basing out, He's gonna be trying to work around Gabriel this way, he's blocking. Right away, he's gonna be changing the base, releasing the hand on the collar, get across. Just, I want you to turn your head the other way now. Before he reach that control, his hand must stay here until he gets chest on top of Gabriel's chest. Now when he has that chest here, that control, he can let him go the leg and place his hand anywhere he wants, here, across the body, it's not gonna make difference now. One more time, I want you to go one time outside, one time inside. Go ahead, the base, control, switch, yes. Go back. You have to understand, you gotta use your body weight to pass the guard. You cannot push his leg away, I want you to use your chest your weight on top of your opponent. Just a moment here, go back. Now there's a question for you, I have a question. Who has the better position now? You do have, you have your better position, right? Stay in that position as long as possible because it's good for you, especially when you put your knee on top of his head, he can't breathe right, he can relax right now. That's why I want you to take a minute to pass the guard, not five seconds. I guarantee in about 30 seconds he'll let you pass the guard. Because it's such a good control, there's a lot of pressure on top. Take your time, but stay tight on him. Every time you feel it's too hard on this side, change the side. And he goes back right away and block, go back to the same side. But everything's on the body weight. Good, slow, get to the side. On this move, we're gonna have one variation, left or right direction. All depends how he react against my move. Then I will choose my left side or my right side. I always like to go to the easy side. 
I'm gonna be basing myself. My knee is pointing out. Control his collar, not too deep. If it's too deep, I might be losing his leg here. I don't want that, just a little bit back. His hand is stay here. Now I can go around this way. Hold his head and I will release the collar. Keep the hook right here is the last thing that will come out. Then he get across his body. Or I have this control here. I hold the gi, palm down. I will touch his knee on his body, hold his leg, and I'm just slowly gonna be moving around. Get over and side control. What happened here is he's not gonna let me do this way or that way he's gonna be blocking. And the side that he blocks, I just take the other opportunity. I'm trying to go this way. He blocks me here, I go around. I go around, he blocks me around, I go back in. That means I will use his reaction to know which side would be better for me to go. In this situation, Todd on top will be, he'll be almost around Lou's legs, but Lou is still blocking him, and he'll come to block and use his legs. Todd will keep holding his arm this way, and also with his arm, he's gonna go in front of Lou's shin, and he's gonna be holding right in front of Lou's legs this way. He wants to stay in front of Lou's legs. And now just by using his hip and his body, go ahead, push his body, he's gonna change and lose direction. And he's gonna end up on Lou's back right here. He can have the knee on the stomach, he can have this chest on, on his chest, side control. And the most important thing is he just passed the guard. He got through the legs using the leverage of his body. Can you do it again one more time? Good. He gets the leg over. Okay, go back, now slow. Just turn around here, I want them to see your hand. Good, stay there. Put your leg across. Okay, this is a very important position here. His arm in front of Lou's legs, right here in front of his shin. Holding the leg, he's gonna stay his body down, his hip locked right here, taking his time. And when least when when he gets the control over the elbow on this side over here, I gotta turn you guys around a little bit too. This way, good. He has the control, elbows in, perfect. Now he will have to pull the elbow, the leg, make a good posture, and just push his hip forward with the arms. This way, slow. Go ahead, Blue. He just get the legs out of his way in a very good position. Okay, can you do it again? It is very important to use your arms and your hip, and you create a posture doing this. Many times you are almost getting across your opponent's body, but he bring his leg back into the game. He throw his legs over, he's blocking you. He's keeping you on his guard. I'm gonna be holding his arm over here, around his elbow, and my other arm will come, you can just lift the leg up, Richard, in front of his shin, this way. I'm gonna be holding his leg. 
and I'm here tight, and now I'm going to change his whole body direction. I will raise my head up, lift his arm and his leg, and push him with my hip. Then I can go and get across his back. Okay, now we, we're in the fight, and uh, Eddie get a good control on top. He's basing his hand, one on the hip, one a little bit higher, holding the gi. You can hold the gi. Hold the ass. You bring both collars together. One hand holding both collars, one hand holding the pants, and he's taking his time. He's protecting his arm. His neck is okay. He's waiting for his opponent to open his leg and try something. Let's open the leg and try. Sooner he opened the leg, Eddie will explode with his arms inside to go around. Go back. Can you do it again? Sooner Gabriel open the leg, he's going to come around with the arms. Okay, now he can do two things. He can hold hands like this. He can hold his own wrist. Go back. He can hold this way. Fingers. He can hold that way. The important thing now is to close the distance. I want his body to stay close to Gabriel's body. Now Eddie can choose which side you want to control the collar. Always when you control the collar, your palm down. You put your thumb inside, but your palm stay down, this way. The second hand will go from the back and hold his belt. Turn around, turn around the other way just to see. No, 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 go ahead this way. If you notice now, he's holding up the hip. This way Gabriel has no mobility on the bottom. That's the key position, one hand here, one hand there. Now he takes his time. It's a lot of pressure. It's not a comfortable position for Gabriel. Slowly, he's gonna be walking around with his chest. You drop the hip down and get across the body. It's a very important to be patient when you pass the guard, especially when you have a good position like that. Again, you control one hand on his chest one hand on the pants. You can see here, he has a good base. He will take his time. He also never sits back on his hip. He always stays with his weight a little bit forward. His hips stay a little bit higher. Not sitting back and relax this way. He has no balance. A little bit up, waiting for your opponent to try something. As soon as he opens the leg, both of his arms will be around. He's gonna be able to choose the collar, hold the belt, and slowly, walking around. Good job. Good. I'll be very patient here. I will get both of his collars, make the, his collars become one collar, where other hand will hold his pants. Stay with your hip a little bit high and wait. I wait for him to open his leg. I'm not gonna move until he open his leg. As he try to open and start moving his hip away, working his game, I will slide both of my arms out right away to get around. I will give you a few options. I can hold the belt, or I can reach my own arms. Hold my own arms here. I will walk 
with, I will push my body forward or I can bring his body close to me. Or I will do both at the same time. I want to use now my body weight on his legs and I will keep my head on the same line of his head. This way. It's a lot of pressure against his body now, it's my whole body weight. And I have the opportunity to choose which side I wanna go. It can be either side. I'll go down, collar this way. My second hand will go around his hip, keep his hip up. And slowly, I'm gonna be walking around my chest, keep elbow down, side control. <laughs> 